What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how I got rid of this skinny seat and those ugly Mototech plastics and swapped it for a CRF 50 plastic seat and gas tank. The aesthetic looks so much better. It's completely functional, solid. We've got custom side plates, custom subframe on the bottom. Um, all done with a drill, grinder, a couple hand tools, nothing crazy expensive. Um, I'll show you what materials I use in a, just a sec. Um, all the nuts and bolts. So if you want to get your Mototech looking like this, stay tuned and let's get it going. All right guys, so let's get into the tools and the supplies that I use to build it all up. Um, so as far as power tools go, you're gonna need to get yourself a grinder. Uh, this one is Craftsman, pretty cheap, 45 bucks at Lowe's. Um, we got a cutoff wheel and a grind disc. The grind disc actually came with the grinder so that was nice. Uh, the wheels are about four or five bucks, not a big deal. Um, you will need a drill, you know, whatever works as long as it's power enough to drill through steel. Uh, with that we got a 3 8 bit and a 3 16 Let me make sure. Yep, 3 8 um, so you're gonna need those two bits. Uh, I mean it just depends on whatever uh, nuts and bolts you decide to use. Um, what I used was a M8 with a 1.00 pitch and I'd say they're about an inch long, inch and a quarter long. Um, they are a little bit longer than I wanted but these work great. Um, so we got some flat washers and we got some lock nuts as well. That's going to keep it all nice and secure for when you're mobbing around, they're not going to rattle off. So we got a Sharpie. You know, you can use Sharpie, pencil, whatever you want to use to mark your holes in your cuts. Um, so we got some Allen keys. Um, you know, you, just to take apart the bike, it's going to help out a lot. Uh, we got a box knife for later on when we're doing the plastic or the side panels. I use the cardboard from the CRF 50 kit. So make sure when you get the CRF 50 kit, you keep the box. That way you can you know mark your up mark yourself up a template for your side panels uh, let's see so I got a pair of pliers uh, we got some I should say snips a couple pair of pliers and a crescent wrench this is going to be for bending our angle iron later um, the angle iron is pretty thin it's easy to bend and of course we got our wrenches these are 13 uh, I want everything metric since this is a Chinese bike Everything on it's pretty much metric anyways, so let's keep it all the same. And that's about it for the tools. Uh, as far as the nuts, bolts, washers, lock washers, um, I used 10 total. Uh, anything else that I used came from the bike itself, from the old plastics. Uh, I used a couple of screws and nuts to tack on the uh, side panels. And as far as the materials I used, I got some angle iron, nothing special. This is eighth inch by three quarter by three foot. I got two sticks of this and this is what I was left over with. So I mean, I'm sure if you could find a four foot piece that would be more than enough. Um, so that's pretty much it. All right, I'm gonna take this thing apart and I'll give you a rundown of what pieces I cut, how I cut them, and how I attached it all, and made it look nice and solid. And uh, let's get to it. All right, and as for the CRF 50 kit, um, I went on Amazon and I just put in CRF 50 kit with seat and gas tank, because uh, you're gonna wanna get, get the gas tank, otherwise you're gonna have a huge gap up in there. Um, and I'll show you what I did with the gas tank. There's a seam around it from 
when it's molded and I literally just cut the seam up um, right on the lines and it fit almost immaculate. Let me show you real quick. You know, it's a little hard to see down there, but uh, you can see the curves. They actually end up perfectly around here. Um, this tab lines up with the mounting hole from the old plastics and you can kind of see that curve a little bit better. It just matches up great and it works perfect. Um, and it did give me a lot of room underneath to mount the controller. Uh, I made these side panels so you can't actually see any of that. But if you go down in here, uh, again it's too dark, but it actually works as a functioning shroud. So when you're riding it'll scoop up air and it'll push it into the controller keeping it nice and cool. Um, you know later when I take it apart and show you guys I have so much room in here for a bigger battery. Uh, shout out Electro Co. I actually got a 72 volt coming for them. Um, now it is the 72 volt 24 amp hour uh, that specifically states on their website does not fit in here. But since I moved the controller and uh, you know I'll probably cut off some tabs for the side panels, I'm sure it's going to fit no problem. Um, so again, you know, don't go buying one if you still have the stock bike because it's not going to fit. But uh, yeah, let me get this thing taken apart. Um, I'll show you what I cut up, what the sizes are, and just, you know, how it all fit in there. All right, now that I got it all torn down, you can see just how much room I have in that battery compartment now. Um, I didn't have to modify anything to put the controller up top. Uh, let's show you real quick. So this is the old mounting screw and nut behind it that comes with the original controller. And uh, what I did is I put the tab underneath where the stock control functions would be and I screwed it in onto the second hole over and that's gonna hold it nice and tight up top. And then what I did for the back is, you can see there's the tab and then there's the hole right underneath it. You can kind of see. So basically it'll sit down nice and tight up top and then the fins right here will be pushing up against these bars right here. So I just put a couple zip ties from this hole down to the bottom hole right under here. Let's see if you can see that. Yep, yep. And that's going to hold that nice and tight. That ain't going nowhere. And when I put the plastics on, um, with the gas tank being cut open, it's going to sit in there perfectly. Now it does touch right here, just the slightest, um, right about here, but it doesn't put any pressure on it. Um, You'll see on the seat, uh, there used to be two hooks right here where the seat slides in for the regular CRF 50. I cut those out and then I cut all the ribs from here over. So now that this right here and this right here are going to sit nice and flush right back here. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then basically you'll have a little rib. That comes straight across here. I cut that out um, on the plastics. There's little tabs that reach over and go into these little slots. And basically I just flattened all of that out. I'll show you uh, all the little pieces that I cut out. And then from the back, the back tab is going to stay the same. And that's going to be our new mounting point with the subframe. Uh, when you do get these plastics, you will have to go get, a, get yourself a couple screws. Um, so this is pretty modular to where all the plastics are going to attach to the seat. So you got your side plate here, side plate here, and that's just going to be screwed down in four points right there. Um, your front uh, shrouds, whatever you want to call them. Um, you, know, you got two screws right here, and then the top will actually attach right there and right at the bottom there to the gas tank and then the gas tank is just held on by the shrouds itself um, so with the gas tank I'll grab the plastics real quick and I'll show you yeah subframe looks good all right 
Okay. So here's all the stuff I cut out just to give you a show. But with the stock gas tank, you'll notice that it has a uh, molding seam all the way around it. And what I did is I just took my grinder and I cut that seam all the way across. Made it perfect with the uh, flush by the tab right here. Cleaned it all up with the uh, with the file. And you see how that came out nice and flat where the gas tank would normally sit. Let's get this in here real quick. A little bit of a pain in the butt. So you can see I squared off that edge right there. And then I cut that all the way around. And now it sits perfect. All right, and for the seat, so normally you would have these little hooks right here um, that sit right about here. And uh, what I did is I cut it right flush, basically with this tab right here, and then this side right here, and then I flattened that all down. So that way, once you make your subframe, See if I can show you that. Once we get under here, that seat is going to sit nice and flat all the way down. So that right there is going to sit right in that gap we created. And uh, so what I did is I took a little L bracket and I screwed it in here where the stock mounting hole is for the gas tank and right where that stock hole is for the old plastics. Basically just bolted that in real quick. And then I came through the back and took a piece of angle iron. And uh, I mean, I'll show you all that in a little bit. Um, cut it out, bolted it up in here, and then I started taking my measurements. So pretty easy stuff. Just got to be very careful with the plastics. Don't want to cut too deep. Get a little better view of that. Go. Cool. All right, now let's check out the subframe. All right. So this is uh, five pieces. So right here is where the old subframe, I guess it's not even a subframe, but where the old frame ends. So if you notice the seat comes way back out to here so if you didn't have this extra support if you sat back too far on that seat it would just bend down and it would probably snap on you and it wouldn't work out very well all right so let me get this subframe apart and i'll start showing you how i measured it eyeballed it and got it to this point All right guys, so here we are in stock form. Uh, now these are Chinese bikes, and if you can see this piece right here compared to these bars, and I got some crappy lighting in here, but you can see how crooked it is. Just from uh, the manufacturing process, they welded this side high and they welded this side low. So you're gonna have to eyeball a lot of this stuff. Um, it's not gonna be, you know, the most perfect uh, thing in the world. So let me show you how I started. Um, obviously your controller won't be there at the moment. Uh, if you want to move it that way, go for it. Um, you don't have to, it's just something I did. So again, once I got all my plastics cut up, you know, see that nice and flat at the bottom right there, that's going to sit perfectly flush onto that right there. So once you get your plastics all cut up, We'll go ahead and we'll put our plastics on. I'll grab my little Allen bolt right here. And let's get that screwed in. So you'll know you have it right once you get that screwed down. And honestly, just with this, I took it out for a ride and it was pretty dang solid. So we got that hand tight. Now we're going to come down here and let's see if I can shine a little bit of light on it. Um, so lift up. So you got that nice path right there. 
fits perfectly right down on there okay nice and good and let's see let's see if I can get up in there but right right here is where the old one ends and you can see the tabs I cut out um, you could have gave I could have gave myself a little bit more room but it fits perfect right in there and then it sits flush all the way down cool so the old frame ends right there and the tabs are way back here so the first thing I did was I grabbed my piece of angle iron and what I did is I put them up on the sides right here so we got one right up here and then another piece right right over here and what I did is I measured from side to side from the bottom of the plate all the way over and then I cut myself out a piece for it to sit just like this straight across and then that piece is going to sit up just like this you'll mark your holes out and then um, what you want to do is right where the tab ends right here and right here you want to cut these out and notch these out at the end so i'll show you my finished piece so we went from this to this right here so you can see measuring from side to side those pieces are going to end up just like this right and what i ended up doing was once i got that piece cut out i popped it up in here and then i bolted that in let me get a better picture of that sorry i'm self-filming here it's kind of hard so that way you bolt it in it's going to sit flush on the tabs on the sides right here and then you're going to have these tabs on the outside for when you bolt these to the side of the stock frame so that's going to sit right on top of it just like that okay all right so let me get these bolted back in just to show you how i came up with my measurements uh to go from this to the stock frame and i'll be right back all right now that i got my tab mounted up here um, now the width of this it doesn't have to be perfect because that can always be grinded out later so if you want you can make this a little bit wider and then just again make sure when you're cutting that piece out it sits flush with this side and flush with that side that way when you're coming off of your stock frame and coming straight out that you're not you know it's not poking out to the side and it's running nice and straight all right so once you got that done um, then what we're going to do is take a piece of angle iron and we're going to go from you know you want to go somewhat far enough from here on the stock side of the plate uh, don't mind those holes we'll be drilling those later so you just want to go from here and then all the way up past your tab so just measure yourself a good piece from here all the way to the end of your tab. That way you can mount it to the side of the frame. And then what you'll end up doing is bending it ever so slightly so it sits flush on top of this. So let's see. These are the pieces I ended up making. So you can see I cut this piece off all the way down to the end there. And uh, you know again don't mind the holes we'll be drilling those in a second and then you can see right at the end i bent it just a little bit with uh, my crescent wrench and my pliers so now it's gonna sit it's gonna sit right on top of that and then bolt into the side right there yeah, and this is kind of hard to see. I don't have very good lighting. But you can see right at the stock frame here, it's going to sit right flush against that. And then it's going to come down and it's going to curve right on top of the, the tab we made for the back of the seat. Okay. All right. 
And then once you got that done, uh, basically you, you just want to drill your hole straight through the bottom here and here. And then you'll put this up on top. And then you'll mark yourself a little dot with your Sharpie or your pencil. And then what you'll do is you'll um, drill that hole out. And then what I did is once I got that hole drilled out, I put a bolt straight through it. Uh, let me show you that real quick. All right, now we've got our bolt straight through it. Um, you'll notice that you'll have to bend it just so slightly that once you reach the, the side of your uh, frame right here, it's going to sit nice and flat and it's not like way up here or sitting anywhere funky. Uh, so you'll make your plate right here and again you're going to want to cut that piece off right there um, so it sits nice and flat on top and then basically you'll just copy that. Let me get the right piece here. And you're going to make yourself a second one. Just like that. Pop it up on here. Just like so. And you'll bolt that in. And then you have an extension coming from your um, existing frame all the way down to your new tab mount. And that's going to end right at the edge of the seat there. So that way when you sit your butt back too far, you're not bending and it's going to be nice and solid. Um, so we could leave it like this. Um, you know, after that, um, this first hole, there is already an existing hole. And all I did was bore that out with my 3 8 um, And then I marked my side of my tab that I made and drilled another hole through that. Uh, basically, I just pulled everything apart, um, drilled my hole, bolted it down and then took a drill bit from the outside and then bored myself another hole and mounted these two together both sides mounted it up top and then the next thing i did if you go down to the side right here this hole right here is where the stock number plates uh, bolt in and at the bottom and same thing, it was a tiny hole, so I just bored it out with my 3 8 bit to fit my holes. And what I did was I went and took my angle iron stock, grab that real quick. And then, so you could mount it like this, but I thought that was pretty ugly. Um, so what I did was I flipped it, and you'll notice you're kind of hitting on that bottom edge right there. So what I did is I knocked out like a, I don't know, maybe like an inch off that and grab the new ones that I made. So you'll notice that I knocked out, you know, about an inch right there at the end. And then later on I rounded it off just to make it look fancy. So now when you put it up against that, gonna have plenty of room and it's gonna sit nice and flat just like that uh, don't mind the hole right here that'll be for later on and then once I got that finished up took my plate ran it straight up like that see if we can get a better show so right off that mounting hole down at the bottom there and then I came up to my tabs and you know I cut it a little bit farther out like I said later on we can go and cut off the excess so you'll see that again I cut about uh, inch and a half at the end right there and then I bent that tab down because once you mount it at the hole right there and then come up it's a pain in the butt once you come up you'll notice that it'll come out at an angle and it won't sit flat so you're just going to want to bend that till it sits nice and flat you know obviously it'll be inside the bolt hole right here so i'll just give you a quick look there's a piece of angle iron
cut the edge out right there. And then again, cut that edge right there. And then this, I just made that kind of fancy so it lines up. Once you get up in there, you'll kind of mark it and cut a little slit off. And then same thing, you just want to copy this on the opposite side. Make yourself two pieces. And then once you get that all cut up, uh, you put it back together and I'll show you what it'll All right, so hopefully if you've been following me and this ain't too confusing. So this is what you should end up with with your uh, frame extensions. You got two bolts right here. This is all notched out and bent down. And then once you have that mounted up with so, and then we have our tab down here at the back, what you'll end up doing. So uh, we'll just line this up real quick. Doesn't need to go in yet. Cause what we'll end up doing is taking our seat and sliding it right underneath those two tabs there. Just like so. And then they'll sit, you know, somewhat flat. You don't have to worry about it. Once you get your bolt on and your crush, uh, crush washers in and you tighten it down, it'll really clamp itself together. So that's going to be your start. And then that'll help you get your support extension. It's going to sit up just like that. And it's going to sit right on the stock hole right there. Kind of wish I wouldn't have painted these to be able to tell a little bit different, but then it's just going to sandwich right up top. So let me pull, uh, let me pull these plastics off again and I'll mount it all together, give you one more quick show, and then we'll go on to a quick explanation of how I put the side panels on. All right, so again, here it is all put back together. Um, I know I'm probably not the best at explaining all this stuff, but I'm gonna get this footage out. Um, so you can, you know, you can pause, check it out, and try to copy it. Um, it's a lot of eyeballing and just figuring out, you know, um, you know this would have hit so I took my sharpie I moved it over to the side a bit came in the back you know marked it up just cut it off um, you know you got to play with your bends get this sandwich nice and tight um, you know play with your bolt holes it doesn't have to be perfect um, it's, you know it does the length doesn't matter as long as this tab lines up with um, your seat post while you have it screwed into the top there you should be just fine, you know, um, and there's plenty of other ways to do it. So if you guys figure out another way, hit me up in the comments. Let me know how you did it. Um, I would love to see it. So in the meantime, I'm going to put this back together and then I'll give you a quick rundown of how I made the side panels and show you what it looks like without the side panels. Uh, you know, I left a pretty big gap right here and it bugged the hell out of me so let me know what you guys think all right so this is what it's going to look like with the plastics on without the side panels being made um, obviously you can see the controller up there um, if you don't decide to move your controller that's just going to be an extra gap um, a lot of light showing through and i wasn't the biggest fan so what i did was i took a piece of cardboard and um, you know, you really gotta just mess around with it. And what I did was, you know, I got it to sit right around the panel right there, right on the side. I already know I got one mounting point right here. So I know that's where I'm gonna start with my mounting. Um, so once I got this cut out and I got it just about to where I like it, um, and you won't be able to see it, but right here, uh, there's the gas tank and then right in between that the plastic there's a little bit of a gap so what I ended up doing was Taking this and filling it right in between that gap So it leaves a little bit of space right here for wind to come in and cool off the controller So once you get that right about where you like it uh, What I did was go out and buy a 12 inch by 18 inch sheet of 
I don't know, it's some pretty thin aluminum. Um, pretty pricey, it was like, I don't know, 35 bucks or something like that. Prices are pretty ridiculous these days. Um, so what I ended up doing was I took my cardboard and I put it down, traced it out, and cut it out with a grinder. Uh, this is the aluminum. All I did was go to AutoZone and get some uh, carbon fiber vinyl wrap. You know, nothing special, just some cheesy stuff. And uh, from there, I drilled my hole to mount it. Let's see what... Oh, I got the wrong panel there. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I did was I went from the other side. I left that uh, bolt out. And what I did was take my Sharpie and go into the other side and mark it off. Cut that hole out right there. And then what I did was pull the bolt out and I mounted this up in here. And once I figured out where I wanted my holes, so I just drilled a little, uh, this is when I used the, uh, what was it, 3 16th bit. Um, I just drilled through the panel to wrap around the frame bar right here. And then, like I said, I tucked this top up in between the gas tank and the plastics. And what I did was I put a hole in the plastics here and here, and then marked it straight through to the aluminum. And what I'm gonna do is just zip tie those together up. Not a big deal, zip tie right there. And then for way up there, what I did was, these are the old screws from the uh, number plates where they bolt down in the top of the uh, original frame. You'll know when you take it apart. And I used that same drill bit and I marked right up to the corner somewhere up here um, drilled it straight through the aluminum and same thing i just put it up against there uh, marked it with my sharpie put a hole straight through and now we got two solid mounting points with this up top and that one at the bottom and then these are zip tied to the frame and then it bends out a little bit and get sandwiched in between the gas tank and the plastics and zip tied down. Super strong, makes the look a lot cleaner. Um, all that extra vinyl wrap, you know, I just threw it on the fork tubes. Um, still gotta buy some more for the other side because I do like the way it looks. Makes it look nice and sleek. But yeah guys, that's about it. Again, probably not the best at explaining things, but if you like what you see and you end up copying what I do, let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, I got a 72 volt battery coming in. Um, I got some drop pegs so I can drop these down. I should say the uh, seat probably sits about two inches taller. So it really brings up the ride height as well. And just a quick show, here is the old seat, super thin, split my butt cheeks when I'm riding it. Hurt a lot, wasn't very fun. But you can just, you can see how much wider it is. Uh, the stock seat would probably sit somewhere right up here. So, you know, not a lot of room. Um, you know, you can see where my butt was grinding off all the, the material right there. Uh, so now I'll be sitting nice and comfy. So much more padding. But yep, that's about it guys. Hopefully, uh, you get a little bit out of this video and until next time, peace.